Hello and welcome to the Big Wobble. This week Tuesday, Central America was on fire with Santa Maria, Fuego, Momotomba, Talica, Turrialba and Colima volcanoes all reporting eruptions or increase in activity. And just a day later, Mount Etna, Europe's largest volcano, was the ninth volcano this week to erupt or show signs of activity. And earlier in the week, Bali was in danger from Mount Barujari and Mount Bromo, west of Bali, both also recording eruptions. Santa Maria Volcano, Guatemala, reported a phase of elevated activity. And just down the road, Guatemala's Fuego Volcano was at it again. The Colossus was erupting late on 30th of November and was spewing lava into the night sky. And in nearby Nicaragua, a series of at least four small explosions occurred at the Momotombo volcano, the first eruptions here in more than 110 years. Also, the Talica volcano in northwestern Nicaragua has been active since September this year, creating blasts that raised fears of a full-on eruption. Meanwhile, the Kalima volcano, also known as the Fire Volcano, continued to erupt this week, releasing plumes of ash and smoke. And just a week before, the Canlaon volcano erupted in the island of Negros in the Philippines. A huge coronal hole opened up on our star this week, which is probably the reason for the uptick in volcanic activity. Now for the rest of the news. Just a week after Northern Europe was battered by Storm Gorm and Cloder, which delivered winds of up to 100 miles an hour, leaving tens of thousands without power and more flooding for the poor people of the UK, Storm Desmond arrives to batter Ireland and the UK for the fourth time already this winter. The devastation from above, aerial photographs show widespread flooding across Cumbria caused by Storm Desmond, as residents tell of despair after 50 million pound flood defences fail to do their job. And here's how it looked on Saturday morning on the Dutch coast, five minutes from where I live. Hydrogen sulphide said to be killing millions of fish in the Angkol area of Jakarta, Indonesia. And yet another massive fish kill in Long Island waters. Glen Cove Creek fish kill has experts worried. Thanksgiving hell. Floods and storms leave 14 dead in Texas and Kansas. Oklahoma is declared a disaster area. 14 people are reported to have been killed in Texas and Kansas over the holiday weekend after storms brought flooding and freezing rain to a wide area of southern and central US. November 2015 was an average month for major quakes with a total of 16 measuring magnitude 6 or above and it brought the year's total with just one month to go to 136. Another event and important person from the Bible jumps from the pages, a 2,700 year old piece of clay inscribed with the seal of the biblical king Ezekiel. A new discovery has emerged from the historic soil of Jerusalem and it resurrects one of the most important kings of Judah. Another 300 whales have been found washed up 
in a remote inlet in Patagonia in southern Chile in one of the largest die-offs on record, researchers said Tuesday. El Nino is thought responsible for the heaviest rainfall in more than a hundred years, killing at least 269 and leaving hundreds of thousands stranded in Tamil Nadu, India. I couldn't possibly tell you if the poor guy in the video driving that truck has survived or not. It's an ecological disaster after a tanker spo spills oil onto Sakhalin shore North Pacific. Bad weather preventing cleanup amid fears for endangered sea lions. A magnitude 7.1 on the South East Indian Ridge is the first major quake of December. It's also the 137th of 2015. Southern Hemisphere Misery Temperatures of more than 45 degrees Celsius grips South Australia. Philippines heat index pushing 45 degrees Celsius and South Africa in the high 30s. Now, a foul stench of a cover-up as a government-funded scientist claims higher levels of Fukushima cesium-134 detected off the US coast are okay and we should carry on with our recreation activities in the sea. The Woods Hall Oceanographic Institution have just released a report showing higher levels of cesium-134. The so-called fingerprint of Fukushima have been detected off the US west coast. Scientists mon monitoring the spread of radiation coming across the Pacific to the west coast from the stricken nuclear plant Fukushima have reported finding increased levels of radiation along the coast of Alaska, Canada and all the way down to Southern California. However, the guy who wrote the report, radio chemist Mr. Bustler, seen above, the levels are 500 times lower than US government safety limits for drinking water and well below limits of concern for direct exposure while swimming, boating or other recreational activities. I did some quick digging and learned that the US government had given the organization almost nine million dollars. And finally a real horror story is emerging. Chinese and Danish academics discover that superbugs have breached the last line of antibiotic defences. Grim announcement says worldwide epidemic inevitable. Well, that's it folks. Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you all next week. Bye bye.